On top of uproar in Beijing and Shanghai, students in another major city protested against strict COVID-19 rules. This, as a sensitive anniversary, is around the corner. Some Chinese banks are having a hard time processing withdrawals. The issue first appeared in rural community banks, but has now extended to a major bank in the country's capital city. At least a few Americans have asked a U.S. consulate in China for airlift evacuation, but a source told NTD the consulate has responded with a firm no so far. And classic fighter pilot film Top Gun gets a long-awaited sequel. The film hit theaters this week, but an image of the Taiwanese flag has sparked debate, first vanishing in the trailer and now reappearing on the silver screen. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Demonstrations broke out in China's Tianjin University Thursday night. Students were heard shouting down with bureaucracy amid demands that they be allowed to leave the shuttered campus and go home. Dozens of police officers were sent to the site to stamp out the protest. And this on the eve of one of the most sensitive anniversaries in China. Check it out. Following several successful protests in Beijing universities, another erupted in Tianjin University Thursday night. The city's strict zero COVID-19 rules mean students have been stuck on campus and blocked from going home. Thursday, hundreds of them assembled on campus to protest, yelling, let me go home. The student protest marked a decision to take the mass appeal route, rather than addressing concerns more quietly through representatives and school leaders. More worrisome for Chinese officials, the latest protest featured two new slogans, down with formalism and down with bureaucracy. What's meant by formalism? It's a rare term in Western nations, but a relatively common one in authoritarian countries. Chinese affairs analyst Tang Jingwen explains that the so-called formalism refers to when situations or events are scripted or prearranged for a certain outcome. Students have complained about the months-long lockdown on campus, especially because no new infection cases have been found in the area. They also say life on campus has gotten hard, with skyrocketing prices for essential goods and depression rates rising. Local authorities ordered all Tianjin students to shelter in place for three days starting Friday and to wait for further instructions. Students were told they will be confined to campus until the end of the year. Residents are prohibited from moving their vehicles. Grocery stores, pharmacies, and food markets are the only shops that remain open. As for the university protests, posters declare the students' demands. One, that they will be allowed to go home. And two, that those who participated in the protests not be held accountable or punished. They reportedly plan to march again on Saturday to keep up the pressure on school authorities. Two other major cities, Beijing and Shanghai, also saw multiple protests in recent weeks. They broke out both in residential areas and on college campuses. The demonstrations attracted widespread attention, especially because the anniversary of one of China's most sensitive incidents is around the corner, the June 4th Tiananmen Square massacre. It marked the final day of the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests. Military troops opened fire on demonstrators, who were largely unarmed college students, asking for democracy and freedom. Thousands were killed. ICBC is a renowned Chinese multinational bank, but even its branches in China's capital city now may have trouble processing withdrawals. Is it that they're short on cash, or are there other reasons behind the holdup? Here's more. In Beijing, customers are lining up outside a major bank. It's called the Industrial and Commercial Bank, or ICBC. It's a Chinese state-owned multinational bank. But right now, the bank seems to be having trouble processing withdrawals. The man behind the camera says he's the last in line and was told the wait would be at least an hour. He's in Beijing's central Changwon district. 
The man also mentioned two other central districts in Beijing and said the ICBC bank branches there are all closed. The video got a big response on social media. Some say the issue marks an incoming storm for China's banking industry. Others have described it as a way to tighten control over Chinese citizens by cutting them off from their financials as part of the country's zero COVID-19 policy. Banks outside Beijing are also reporting problems. In Hunan province, nearly a million customers are unable to access their bank accounts. That's been going on for more than a month. Chinese media reports say those accounts hold a combined value of $1.5 billion. Some Americans in China are struggling to find their way home. That's according to one of our viewers, an American currently living in northeastern China. He told NTD that at least a few Americans have requested airlift evacuation from the U.S. consulate in Xinjiang City. Xinjiang is a major city in northeastern China. But the consulate responded that it's their personal responsibility to arrange transportation home. That's despite what happened in 2020, when the U.S. sent chartered flights to evacuate American citizens from Wuhan, the epicenter of the virus pandemic. As for now, the viewer says the number one trending topic in the expat community in China is finding flights to exit the country, but it's proving a difficult task. The viewer says in Xinjiang, only one international airline is available. It operates one flight per week, and tickets are usually sold out two months in advance. On top of this, there are reportedly difficulties in boarding flights. The viewer says the Xinjiang airport makes passengers fill out a long form, available only in Chinese. He said, quote, you can imagine the terror one will feel who is not fluent in Chinese. Apparently, there is no assistance offered to foreigners, and they do miss their flights as a result. Several Chinese airlines are available, but the viewer says these flights are highly unreliable, as passengers are made to wait over 20 hours in other cities for connecting flights, and Chinese airlines often cancel their flights. In the meantime, China continues to enforce strict COVID-19 policies. They include having health workers disinfect the homes of residents who tested positive for the infection and taking those that have tested positive to quarantine facilities. The viewer confirms that a few Americans have asked the U.S. consulate in Shenyang to evacuate them. But the consulate has stayed firm with its no so far. He says the consulate told them if the risk of staying is too much, they need to leave on their own. The viewer says their response indicates to him that they don't want the Chinese regime to lose face. Responding to his comment, a State Department spokesperson told NTD that for U.S. citizens in Xiangyang who want to leave China, commercial flights remain available, but limited. The department also added that it's engaged on the issues of airport access for U.S. citizen travelers with confirmed air tickets. It notes that the U.S. ambassador to China and other officials have consistently raised concerns about the safety of U.S. citizens with Chinese officials. It's unclear how many Americans have requested evacuation from U.S. consulates in China. NTD reached out to the consulates, but they didn't provide a response to that question. Lastly, given the difficulty of leaving China, the viewer believes the country should qualify for a travel advisory like North Korea and Afghanistan, a level four, which means do not travel. He notes the State Department's current rating of China is a three. That's the same as Jamaica and Japan. A group of bipartisan senators is urging President Biden to keep Section 301 tariffs in place to continue targeting China's unfair trade practices. The Biden administration has publicly signaled to lift the tariffs. The senators are concerned that's exactly what the Chinese Communist Party wants. Led by Republican Senator Bob Portman, eight other senators from both parties signed on to the letter. Before finalizing the move, President Biden may have to resolve a heated debate among his aides first. His Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, wants to slash many of these tariffs. She says it will help combat inflation in the U.S. While Trade Representative Catherine Tai wants to keep the tariffs to protect U.S. jobs and address China's behavior in global markets. 
Inflation spiked 8 percent over the last year in the U.S., putting pressure on the White House to push down costs on groceries, gasoline and other consumer goods. Yellen said reducing tariffs is worth considering to lower inflation. But Catherine Tai questioned the idea, calling it something between fiction or an interesting academic exercise. Adding fuel to the debate, unions say they're opposed to relaxing tariffs. Union support is crucial for Democrats ahead of the midterm election in November. To examine the tariff issue, the Biden administration launched a review last month. The tariffs started with $50 billion worth of strategic industrial goods back in 2018. They aim to punish the Chinese communist regime for forced technology transfers and theft of intellectual property. After China retaliated, the Trump administration raised that value to $370 billion, also covering T-shirts, bicycles, toys, flooring and other goods. The long-awaited sequel to an American classic has arrived on the silver screen. Top Gun Maverick hit theaters earlier this week. But one detail from the film has caught audiences' notice. It has to do with glimpses of the Taiwanese flag and pressure to appease communist China. Here are the details. Here we go. In three, two, one. Top Gun Maverick is finally gracing audiences after a years-long wait. But the sequel to the famed fighter pilot movie is getting attention for more than just its action scenes and star cast. In the original film from the 1980s, Tom Cruise's title character Maverick wears a bomber jacket decorated with Taiwanese and Japanese flag patches on the back. The jacket came from the character's father, another pilot who joined a Taiwan cooperation effort when he served in the U.S. Navy. That plot detail is based on the U.S. Navy's missions off of Taiwan and Japan from 1963 to 1964. But the 2019 trailer for Top Gun 2 made a change. It replaced the Taiwanese and Japanese flags with fictitious patterns in order to appease the Chinese regime. The change was believed to have been made so the film would be allowed to screen in China, one of the world's largest movie markets. Beijing claims Taiwan as part of its territory and rejects messages or symbolism that separate the island from mainland China. Taiwan is governed by its own democratically elected leaders. It has never been ruled by China's Communist Party. As for the Japanese flag's exclusion, Japan invaded China in World War II. Moviegoers delivered swift backlash over the flag's removal, pointing out that a film meant to glorify the U.S. Navy shouldn't bow down to Beijing. But it appears the change didn't stick after all. With the film now screening, audiences soon noticed both the Taiwan and Japan flags have made a return. Top Gun 2 is expected to face censorship in China and does not currently have a Chinese release date, partly because of the reversal but more so because of the film's emphasis of American military might, a theme Beijing has repeatedly sought to remove from movie theaters. Also worth noting, Chinese developer Tencent had originally financed part of the film, but the Wall Street Journal reported the company later backed out of the deal. That's over fears that its link to the film could anger Beijing. The film was originally slated to release in 2019, but was delayed during the pandemic. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here, after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half, a battle over influence in the Pacific Island countries. Both Australia and China visiting the area with different approaches. And the U.S. is watching closely. The United Nations issued a clarification to fix some issue with China. The regime has misrepresented comments from the United Nations High Commissioner of Human Rights. Our full episode can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a free 14-day trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. The 2022 NTD 8th International Chinese Vocal Competition will be held from September 29th to October 2nd at the Merkin Hall of Kaufman Music Center in New York City. The competition is honored to have specially invited vocalists with the world-renowned Shen Yun Performing Arts to serve on its panel of judges. The gold award is $10,000. For more information, please visit vocal.ntdtv.com.